Hi everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to this week's question and answer video. Thanks for joining us. I do this every week, every Monday. I'm answering your guys' questions from the last video, last Monday. So please, I encourage you to go ask questions down in the comment section and I'll answer them in the next video next Monday. Please let me know if I miss a question or misunderstand it or you don't understand my answer, okay? Thank you very much. All I ask, please tell me your locations. Let us know where you guys are at. That would be great. So lots of questions. I try not to make the video too long, so I want to just dive right into it. And um, some of the longer questions, I try to sum it up and stuff like that. I just don't want this video to be like an hour or more. I, if I can get it closer to 30 minutes, that's wonderful. First of all, for those of you who have not signed the Stop Narcissistic Online Bullying Petition, please consider doing so. It's right down there in the comment section. It's in the uh, description box. Just Tag, just touch it, takes you there, say yes. It's global for everyone. For those of you who don't want to sign it, I'm still waiting to hear why from someone who refuses to sign it. Please let me know why so I can maybe do something about that. Thank you very much. All right, first question, Rodriguez, the family from California. Healing family from California, hi. I can't go a week without thanking you for all you do. Slowly understanding all the red flags my ex undiagnosed BPD fiance showed and then covered up with his just kiddings. Like I mentioned last week, he's now blaming me for all his traits and have surfaced and says in the, in, in the cause of all his emptiness, coldness, depression, tension, anxiety, not wanting to be their thoughts. God, why'd you do that to him? Um, yeah, so he's, he's uh, falling apart after this loss, looking at himself. He hates himself and all his problems and he can't function and can't have relationships and he needs somebody else to blame because he doesn't want to look at himself. I'm sorry. So last week, uh, told you I'm always feeling scared. I'm fearful. I would be the next on his list to want to sue. And you went, you dove into how he sues tons of people and his family sues everybody. And you're really afraid he's going to sue you. Um, can he really try to sue me stating all his crazy feelings and emotions are me to blame when he's the one that just disappeared from us one second to another. So any, anybody, you know, in the United States, anybody can sue anybody. Not everybody can win. You know, I would advise go to a lawyer that deals specifically with this and he'll tell you your rights. He'll tell you what you can do. Maybe. Okay. Um, it must be an also awful feeling as you heal from this relationship, you'll be less scared of him and what he might do. I encourage you to document everything, every little instance that happens, everything that happens and most important, write down how it makes you feel. Like I said, he, he can sue you. Sure. He can sue anybody. Doesn't mean he'll win. I mean, it could be in small claims court. I mean, I don't know what how much damages he's going to try to, would try to say that was caused monetarily, right? Um, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to tell people, no, your fears aren't uh, valid. Um, as, as unstable and as toxic as you have described this person, then I would think fears are valid. I wouldn't talk to him anymore, though, unless it has to do with the children, if that. So you don't need to hear him blame you for things. Say, I won't listen to that. It's garbage. You need to be a father to your children and our relationship is over. And you see how he's not accepting that, meaning he can't look at himself, can't introspect, take any kind of personal inventory. Did I do something wrong? Could it be me? Something for me to fix? Too overwhelming for him. So talk to somebody about this regularly and express these fears that you have and find out what you can do about them and what you can't do, we have no control over, we just accept. And it helps to talk about it, okay? I promise as you heal from this, you'll be less scared. I'm really sorry that you have to fear that. But um, just realize that suing you doesn't mean anything. Just show up for court. That's it. Probably don't even need a lawyer. But I'm not telling you not to get one. I'm not giving legal advice at all. I would actually, to make you feel better, contact a lawyer and ask them what's going on, okay? Thank you. Uh, Truth8497, I signed it a very long time ago. I don't know why people don't. Maybe they don't feel like one more signature will matter. And every single person's signature on the petition matters. And again, I just love to hear somebody that won't sign it say why. It's funny how all the how most of you won't sign it, but not one of you will say why. You'll admit it. If you have a good reason not to sign it, then you would say it. <laughs> so most of you will not sign it for no good reason. Um, happy me. Hi, David. Don't know where you're from. I forgot where you're from. Happy me. Hi. 
Is a psychotic break the same as a breakdown for a PWBPD? Yeah, I mean, that's what borderline means. It's kind of on the line of psychosis. Do they cross that line? Oh, yeah. They slip in and out. Psychosis is a big gray area. We could slip in and out of. It doesn't mean necessarily we're psychotic. But we can have a psychotic psychotic episode or breakdown. So, yeah, it could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tim from Pennsylvania. Hi, Tim. Professionals say that narcissists never take accountability, don't have true empathy, don't admit to being flawed and other misconceptions. However, during the phase when I was being love bombed, my ex fiance narcissist, covert, vulnerable, etc., she did and said anything and everything to come off as a normal human being. I think it's very dangerous for professionals to make these claims that narcissists will not do these things. Can you expand on this, please, and explain the dangers of misinforming victims? It's just one of those things. Not all, right? Not all. Some narcissists apologize. May not be sincere. Some uh, uh, narcissists will be really nice and kind and generous and giving. May not be sincere. People are multifaceted. So are they. Everyone is. Um, so, yeah, not, not all people with NPD will never say sorry. Some will say it. Some might mean it. Some narcissists, well, they... NPD, people with NPD still have some empathy. Maybe not much compassion or regret or remorse, but they're supposed to have a little. So, yeah, they're capable of saying it and going through the, the, uh, going through the act of things. But, I mean, what, what is an apology when I keep repeating it? I keep hurting you the same exact way. I'm sorry and do it again. I'm sorry and do it again. I'm sorry and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, okay, I'm saying I'm sorry. I don't really mean it. Right? It's just manipulation. The, the dangers for pro professionals to make these claims that narcissists will not do these things. Can you expand on this, please? And explain the dangers of misinforming victims. I, I don't really necessarily know how dangerous that is to a victim to just say a narcissist will do this and a narcissist won't do this how dangerous that is to a victim why the victim needs to know what the abuser's diagnosis is at all except that it's interesting except that it might make me leave them it might make me accept that it's over that it would never work but <clears throat> i mean I, I get accused of this all the time i'll make a video about borderlines about borderline personality disorders and i always got to have some borderline down there saying not me not me you're wrong you're you're damaging and stuff like this and i and i, I try to always say not all you know um there's many other ways that professionals can be damaging to their clients much more than this way um yeah i guess you could tell someone no narcissists always do this they, ne they never apologize and, and the victim sitting there going, oh, okay, I thought they're a narcissist. So, so they, they never apologize. So now this, my husband does apologize to me. So now he doesn't have narcissistic personality disorders. So now I think that this could work and I'm going to stay. There's the damage, right, Tim? I think that's the damage you're talking about. Yeah. I think we place a lot of importance on titles, roles, and grouping and judging people. When really it's just the behavior, right? Abuse is wrong. I'm not going to live with abuse. And I don't think abusive people change. I'm not going to, you know, reform my wife that abuses me for the last few years. And now we're just going to hope that she's going to get some help and stop abusing me. No, it's, it's completely objective. It's the worst objectification you can do to a human being is to mistreat them on purpose. Abuse them. I think once someone abuses you, that's it. Relationship's over. Done done and i'm not talking about making a mistake and calling you a bad name in a fight and apologizing and not doing it again and you know i'm not talking about perfection but trying to purposely hurt your partner the relationship's over there's no fixing that they can, if they want to change and go change you know for many years go try to change and then hopefully not abuse the next person i don't know but i'm not going to wait around for that yeah thanks tim okay Tim again, could you do a video on reactionary abuse? I know you did one with the Australian lady, but it would be nice to have your full approach on it because I feel like we don't hear about that enough. That's a big source of shame for me and I can't be the only one. No, you definitely aren't the only one. And yes, I'll do it. Um, write it down right now. 
coming soon. Thank you, Tim. Bronson from Wisconsin. Good to see you again. Why would she reach out when I'm almost positive she has a boyfriend? So here's what we see here. Good to see you, Bronson. She doesn't value respect, loyalty, integrity, or commitment would be my guess, right? Yeah, we're all different. And it takes a long time to know this, to learn this. Yeah. If someone's a cheater, then it's not surprising when they cheat, right? It's just when we meet someone and we categorize them and say, oh, I can trust this nice person. Why did they cheat? We we're dating for a month and they cheated on me. It makes no sense. Oh, you're dating a cheater. You just didn't know that. See, if, if we don't attach so hard, if we don't have sex, right, with them, do you see? And then they go cheat and they go date someone else and it's like, oh, well, see ya. But we get so invested, so invested. I'm paying for their rent. You know, I, I cut off all my friends. I stopped going to school. I quit my job. I, you know, I, got, I do all these things for this person and now they did this. Oh, my God. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. I don't want to stop this. I don't want, I've invested too much. I'm too attached. I'm too dependent from the toxicity, whatever it may be. So yeah, Bronson, good to see you again. Sorry you dated a, uh, a cheating, lying person that their word means nothing. How long did it take to find that out? Madalena, don't know where you're from. I chose the father of my child who is my husband for 15 years because I got pregnant at 19. He's a masculine variant of my mother. Last year, I took my kid and moved away for nine months, but my husband, as usually, didn't care about our child good, and he was victimizing himself in front of our child when he came back to me. My kid, who was 13, began to hate me. So, for my kid well-being, I went back to my husband. So, he abuses you and your child and himself in front of your child and you went back to him for the child i don't understand that i really hate seeing each other hurting my husband doesn't admit and, and you said that english isn't your uh first language that might be might be something going on that i'm not understanding because that i really hate seeing each other hurting but my husband doesn't admit it and won't talk about our problems but he doesn't This is really long. I, I cut some of it off. Sorry. The other day, my husband, who calls his father for everything that's broken in our apartment, said that an adult should be here to help us when he is 40. I found many wise for every behavior. My son loves him, and I remember I also loved my mother so deeply, even though she hurt me daily. My son is a sweet boy, but he regurgitates every word of his father, and he replicates my husband mean behavior on our dog, what can I do? Uh, divorce him, leave him immediately, and demand that your child, your boy, is in therapy. By leaving this relationship, you'll teach your child that this is wrong, that this is toxic, and that we do leave a toxic, abusive relationship instead of stay in it forever like you're doing. Okay? By you separating, now there's two homes. Instead of one toxic home, now there's one toxic home, one healthy home. Yeah? We get the child into therapy, yeah, and we get him out of that house half the time, away from him. Might help. But we do not allow our child to mistreat you. At all costs, you do whatever it takes. I don't care if you have to call the police, whatever you have to do. But we don't just keep doing the same thing. Something's got to change. we got to do something different. What's it going to be? Get help, if you're not sure what. Get support to help you make these hard decisions, okay? And you said English is a foreign language. I see that, it's okay. You have good English. Uh, there was just, it, it, maybe it's just the toxicity and dependency of a relationship why you went back to the husband. But going back to the husband for the child is um, probably may, may not be the right choice, okay? I know that if, if a marriage is dysfunctional, neglectful, or abusive, that we don't stay together for the children. That's just simply what we're teaching them, okay? It's a pattern. They'll continue. Liz. Hi, Liz. Good to see you. Don't know where you're... I can't remember where you're from. I'm sorry. Is it normal to start having less empathy the more you deal with toxic people? Sure. 
we can become cold and bitter. I think we've maybe seen people like that. I swear I used to have more empathy years ago, but the last several years have made me like and trust people far less. Well, I think what's important is, is that we have emotional boundaries now, maybe, right? Where we don't have to have such, a, we don't have to feel everything everybody's feeling. And, and I think what might be an element of this is pity. Compassion might have a little pity in it, but compassion and pity are two different things. And we don't want to pity people. And I think that's what gets us into a lot of trouble. We feel so sorry for someone. It's just so unjust or so un not right. And, and I can help this and fix this and please them. Yeah. But can't. Okay. So I think maybe you have less pity for people, which is really good. And we use compassion instead. And I think you have emotional boundaries and realize that we don't have to, you know, extenuate empathy to every single person in our life all the time. I mean, it, we, we got to have autonomy, emotional autonomy. You have your life and you have your bad feelings and your experiences and I have mine. And I don't, I don't make you feel better about all those things. I don't fix all your problems for you. I don't, you know what I mean? You got to learn to do that yourself. And, and that's the problem. We grew up without emotional boundaries. We grew up without being able to protect ourselves and voice how we feel and, and stuff like this and just kind of let people in our life and tell them about things that maybe we shouldn't be telling them yet. What do you think, Liz? I think that's possible. But yeah, I could, I could see how being with somebody long enough that mistreats you, we have less empathy maybe towards people, but I think you still have it there. Yeah. I think empathy is, is overrated. Even sociopaths have some empathy. I, I like compassion. Compassion for others and self-compassion. Thank you, Liz. Hi, David. It's sunny Sunday in Ohio. It's Rory from Ohio. Hi, Rory. I have a question about their lies and how they may even be lying about their lies. It didn't dawn on me until later years when my husband was in a nursing facility. I was visiting him there and he told me an elderly, sorry, an orderly, someone working there, had said something to him that was out of line. So here comes Rory to go fix it. I went to go talk to the nurse's station like, like he can't handle his feelings being hurt. Uh, and he can't fix that himself. Um, but something told me to turn around before I got to the door and he was smiling. He was happy to go see you go do that for him. I asked if it was true and he told me no. He said no. Um, you, you said I mentioned something about this in an echo chamber. Yeah. Yeah. He, he obviously is easily convinced you that he is a victim and he is not self-reliant and can't protect himself and can't take care of himself. And I know he's in a nursing home. But he could talk to you, meaning he could talk to the nurse and say, that wasn't nice. So he's garnishing this attention, right, from you, this care. I have another example. Imagine your husband convinced you that you're, um, that you have all these eating, uh, what's the right term? I, before, I, I didn't want to list them all, but, you know, I can't, I can't say they're diabetic or they're, they're lactose intolerant. And what was the other one? Um, God, I, what's that term? You can't eat uh, wheat and breads and stuff. But say I have all these eating conditions of food, things that I can't eat and allergies and all this stuff, right? And you're his wife and you cook him every meal for 20, 30 years, right? And doing this is not easy. Is it? I mean, I have to use this kind of this and I have to take this extra step to do this so he doesn't have that and do all these things. And I'm trying to, and since he's limited in what he can eat, I want to find dishes that he enjoys more and stuff like this. You would put a lot of time and effort and commitment and, and investment and work into this, right? Pleasing him, making sure he gets that he's healthy, he gets what he needs to eat. And then after 25, 30 years of marriage, he divorces you. And he eats all the things that he told you he can't eat right in front of you. And says, I was just lying to you just for attention. It's a true story. Crazy. Just crazy. A way to control. We can do this by playing a victim. I mean, that's that's what he was doing, right? And that's what that story is, right? I, I can't, I'm extra sensitive to any loud noises because of whatever, my ear damage. So you had to be extremely quiet, okay, all the time. Okay. So now now you're not going to watch TV. Now you're not going to do the dishes when he's home. Now you're not going to, you see that? 
because I'm, I'm a victim. And I, I just see this all the time. It's gross. You know, you'll, you'll know someone for many years and they abuse you. You call the police. The police show up and all of a sudden, I got a bad heart. I can't take what they're doing to me. You know, just like, ugh. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry. I'm sorry, Rory. That you're caring for this man that was never enough. Didn't matter what you did. Never enough. He has to sit there and play those little games while in a nursing home. Insane. Truth 8497. Oh, Ruth. Ruth from the United Kingdom. Hi, Ruth. I love this video. Thank you. Thank you. I need therapy. I want therapy. But fitting it in around work air, work hours is near impossible. I've been trying to change my hours for nearly two years. But due to staff shortages, I'm not allowed to. I'm thinking of quitting and putting my mental health first. But I have a teen daughter to support. There's not really a question here, but any feedback would be nice. Well, 99% of my business for the last eight, over eight years is video. Video. Uh, I encourage clients who want just an audio with me to consider video. It's much, much, much better, but it works just fine. I know it's not the same as sitting in their office, but um, I really haven't seen any problems, issues, difficulties. Anybody watching this wants to chime in down below and give your opinion about sitting in an office face-to-face -face or video, I, I, I understand there's differences and, and because I, I believe that video is better than audio, then I would probably say probably sitting in front of somebody might be better than video. But we run into this all the time, don't we? I mean, just, just thinking about driving and parking and stuff like this, you know, video. I have lots of success with hundreds of clients through video just like this. And I'm very, uh, you're in the United Kingdom. That means I can talk to you in your evenings and it's still during my business hours. I wouldn't change a thing. I'm not telling you to come to me, but you see, I mean, there's plenty of professionals that can talk to you around your hours through video. And I truly believe it works. I, I, I know it works. Anybody want to give your opinion down below? Please do. Any of my, anybody who's talked to me, maybe. I know a lot of my clients watch these videos still. So if, if you believe you had success with me over video, maybe tell um, Ruth that and others. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Good luck. Alec from Melbourne, Australia. Hi, Alec. Another great video. Thank you. I agree. Talking equals healing. I'm a big advocate for talk therapy, too. In my experience, I have found out therapy more effective than medication. Can be, yeah. So, but if we need medication, we may, we may really need it. So I can't understand it's, so I can't understate its importance. I agree with you too that the cluster B personality disorders are high conflict personalities. Yeah, they are. HCPT is almost strictly cluster B. Yeah, we know this. Um, I also think paranoid personality disorder is also a high conflict one, despite being from a different cluster. Can you please touch on paranoid personality disorder a bit? I know paranoid personality disorders hold grudges and are easily offended and angered. Do they lack empathy as well? I will see, I see so much overlap. Yeah, there's right. There's so much overlap in all 10 personality disorders, not just the cluster B. And yeah, paranoid, you know, the, the, these are spectrums and we're talking about personalities. So every, the, you know, Every person with paranoid personality disorder are different. They just have some similar behaviors that puts them in that, that um, spectrum. Uh, paranoid personality disorders are the people that, you know, the conspiracy theorists. Yeah. What was that movie with Mel Gibson? Conspiracy theorist, I think. Yeah, he would be considered paranoid personality disorder. A disorder is a problem or, or let's say a... We all have problems in lives and a problem becomes mental illness or certainly a disorder when it affects areas of your life that that make it you dysfunctional can't can't function can't operate can't work right when it's really affecting your life so i might be a conspiracy theorist i'm not at all never have been but let's say i'm a conspiracy theorist and i like to entertain some conspiracies and every once in a while i'll I'll chime in on a video in the comment section and I'll, every once in a while I tell a friend of mine, you know, talk about it. That's fine. But let's say that one of my conspiracy theories are that working 
turns you into it, it turns your brain into mush or something stupid i'm not trying you know and so therefore i don't work and because i don't work i find myself homeless and stuff like that you see now now it's definitely mental illness isn't it do you see that and some of paranoid personality disorder can be highly narcissistic and they can look kind of like a borderline and they can be very sexual like a histrionic and they can all these things and, and most likely do have traits if if maybe of maybe one trait of all different of all the other nine disorders and they can be very high conflict but not your typical cluster b high conflict those are way more prone to be than the cluster a and c i hope i answered that for you alec thanks let me know sally again hi sally the dog might not like the boy girlfriend boyfriend would that be a red flag lol yeah the previous week question was what if what if they don't like my dog is that a red flag and now sally's saying well what if my dog doesn't like them is that a red flag it can be but i wouldn't use that very much you know there's there's dogs that don't like people that wear hats and we don't know that until four, the dog's four years old and someone walks in the house with a hat and then my dog goes crazy on that person and we don't figure out that it's because of the hat. And if we use the, if we use this method and say that everyone that, that my dog doesn't like is toxic, now we just label someone toxic and they're just wearing a hat. Okay. Thanks, Sally. And I know that was kind of, kind of a joke. Mercedes from Maine here. Hello, Mercedes. I wanted to get your view on a personal matter. My stepdaughter is in her early 30s and has BPD. She has a habit of asking her dad, my husband, if he will buy her random things such as novelty items and media when we are out and about. <clears throat> I find this quite irksome as I don't feel like it is age appropriate behavior. Do you think I'm wrong for feeling this way? Your feelings are never wrong. Okay. Your feelings are never wrong, Mercedes. Um, they're just the way they are. So what's important is that you talk to your husband and let him know that this makes you feel what because i don't even know if you said uh, i find this quite irksome so why don't you describe what irksome is like in your body what is your body doing and then maybe come up with a couple more feelings what it's called okay does that make sense mercedes let's say it makes you feel annoyed it it, it makes you feel like um She's taking, exploiting, taking advantage of us because it's both of you together. Yeah. And what is really important is that you may not be able to control your daughter doing it, but you can, you and your husband together can come up with a term and say, please stop doing that. Um, but I would talk to your husband and tell him that not only when she asks you over and over again, does it make me feel A, B, and C, but when you buy it for her, it makes me feel A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Because the more you say, the better you're emotionally talking to somebody and the better you're getting your message across because it's really about how it makes you feel, isn't it? Okay, Mercedes, tell your husband. Tell her. Tell him. And it's okay, healthy, to have terms in all your relationships, especially the one with your daughter. And highly suggested to have terms with someone with BPD. Emily from South Africa. Hi, Emily. Why do we need to have the option to be emotionally vulnerable? Well, we don't need to be. Um, it's what serves us and what helps us get our needs. We have emotional needs that have to be met and we do this by communicating. We have to be vulnerable. We're social creatures, period. Social creatures. And we do it for survival. Emotional needs are the most important things in our life. Without them, we are dying. It's more important than oxygen. What's the point of having oxygen if you're locked up in a room the rest of your life? Someone slips some food under the door. How long do you want to live like that? If they said, you have to live like this forever. Okay, I'm done. No thanks. Right? I, 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 want, I want some security, some emotional attention some autonomy and privacy and emotional connection with somebody. Okay. It, we have to be vulnerable. We have to take a chance of being hurt. And that's how we succeed like a gamble. 
You take somebody that won't be vulnerable, they won't succeed. If I will never be vulnerable, meaning that I will never give my wife the chance to hurt me, think of that kind of a relationship that all of you have had, right? Best way to not be vulnerable or hurt is I have another relationship with someone else. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't, I don't care. You can leave me. You can do it. I got, I got this. Or I just want to tell you the truth. I'd rather make you do what I want instead of just ask. I don't want to apologize. You could hurt me. I don't want to ask. You could reject me. I mean, it's just that simple. Emily, hope I proved my point. Thanks. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and I cut your name off. I'm sorry. Somebody from Edinburgh, Scotland is asking me a question. I'm sorry I cut your name off. But I think you'll know it's you. My question is, can you give a little talk on non-intimate relationships? I ask as I was involved with a girl who, and I must stress and no concrete proof, that she was a narcissist. But having watched most of your videos, all the signs point to her being either a borderline or narcissist. I did so much for this girl financially and on personal things. She constantly told me how no one had treated her like this ever. I had to cut her off as I really liked her. But after being smeared, watching her blatantly lie, get back with her ex on multiple occasions, but kept saying she wasn't ready for a relationship. So th this is somebody that's using you this is pure emotional exploitation this is someone very toxic in a very toxic relationship completely dependent on this relationship meaning it's been up and down and up and down and up and down and she's addicted and the biggest sign of toxic relationships is what breaking up and getting back together and if you carry a lot of shame and you hate yourself, you don't like those breakups. Those are even more and more intense than it would be for someone who doesn't carry shame. So when she, when they break up or he leaves her or something, she goes, she needs something. She's grabbing for straws, man. You. Mm -hmm. And then when we get back together, we'll get back together. But I'm not ready for a relationship. Meaning I'm not going to commit to you. That's all that means. If I'm going to have a relationship with you and tell you I don't want to have a relationship with you, I'm saying I'm not going to commit to you. That's what that is, right? Otherwise, why do I have a relationship with you? Does that make sense? Unless I'm trying to friend zone you. Right? I just don't want it like this. I just want to be friends. But then I start kissing you. Right? Start talking about sex. Doesn't make sense. Means I want to use you for sex. You see that? I don't want to commit to you. I'm committed to someone else. This will never work. This is temporary. I'm really going to go back to him. And some of this might be subconscious. Um, I'm sorry very much. It's extremely damaging. And that causes dependency and addiction for you. Victoria from the Bay Area. Hi, Victoria. Rapper P. Diddy was caught on video beating his ex-girlfriend, Cassie. What do you think about his apology video, David? And I wrote, I think it's an attempt for PR, and that's it. She knew he was like this, and he knows he's not sorry. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that's the least of the things I've heard he's done, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay abusing women, but there are some things that are worse. Right? Yeah, I've heard he's done things like that. So, and I guarantee you Cassie knows. Yeah. Why would Cassie be with P. Diddy knowing that he breaks laws and is abusive and is just a, you know, powerful tyrant, maybe? What did Cassie want? Children? Marriage? Family? No. I'm not blaming Cassie. I'm just saying the whole thing's a joke. The whole thing is just for us. You know? Uh, Conky, 187, don't know where you're from. Please tell us your locations, locations, locations. Please, everybody, say your locations together. Tell us where you are. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Locations. Um, I just found this channel recently. And I thought I agreed with most of it. Okay. But if I heard you right, you said ADHD is due to childhood neglect. Yes, you heard me right. That is simply not true. Studies suggest there is a very high comorbidity with child neglect or trauma, but not in every case. 
I wanted to point that out. I will say I do not have a degree yet. However, I am in school studying psychology. I checked to make sure I was right. Where'd you check? Where'd you check? Teacher at your university? Because I'm going to tell you right now, not everything you learn in that university is going to be correct or current. See, the problem with formal education that professionals have, there is a problem with it. Many, but one. Say I talk to my 55-year-old therapist who's been out of school now for 20 years, had a formal education over 20 years ago. That education, that information might be 20, 40, 60 years old. There's a reason half my clientele are psychologists, psychiatrists, and therapists. There's a good reason. There's, and they tell me, there's a reason they tell me, where do you, you know, I don't know this stuff. I didn't learn this stuff. How did you know this stuff? Because formal education is, whatever you want to think about it, it's formal education, and there's other education out there. I think it's good that you're getting your degree. I hope it serves you well. But today, colleges become kind of an echo chamber, isn't it? Where we all have to think this way and all stand here in this way. And we all think this is a cool way to do it in politics and religion and stuff like this. Doesn't mean it's right. <clears throat> so, you said, you said, I mean, if, it, if it, it really comes down to not in every case, okay. I mean, that's psychology for you. That is psychology. We've talked about borderline. Not every borderline has been traumatized. Sexually abused. I mean, profession, the, the people who decide this, whatever you want to call them, experts, professional, they still can't even agree on what causes NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, or borderline. So much mi misinformation about that one, it's insane. So what do we do? So we say narcissists are caused by this, and then you chime in and say, not everyone, not everyone, not every time. Yes, you're correct. You're correct across the board. Not everyone. But we've known this stuff for decades. Decades we've known this stuff. I mean decades. I, 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 there are uh, studies, video studies, of 50s and 60s of little toddlers sitting at a table. And the toddler who gets all their emotional needs met sits there and plays with blocks, no problem, concentrates and focuses. The children who do not, the children who are raised in institutions who are emotionally neglected, don't play with the blocks. They can't focus on this. They look around like this and look at the adults for things they need. And That's what's sad is we've known this for decades and yet you're still getting taught today that it's not true. Okay, so where you didn't, you didn't point me to a study and you're not telling me where it comes from. You're gonna say it's genetic? Is that why 80 to 100% of my clients are ADD, ADHD, who have all been neglected and abused growing up? That would be amazing. I think it's more financially beneficial to a doctor to recommend methamphetamine than to look at the parents who's paying them and saying, it's your fault, you need to change and fix this and be better parents. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it, especially in this damn country where pharmaceutical companies are rulers. It makes no sense that you can go to a third world country and get cheap medication, the same medication that you have to pay thousands of dollars for here and get denied for. Cortisol is a stress chemical. And when children are stressed, meaning aren't being pay, uh, paid attention to, that cortisol flows in abundance. At first, cortisol makes your memory focus and attention span better. Over a prolonged period of time, it makes it worse worse we start getting less cortisol too so we're really not focusing and we're hyperactive that's where it comes from if you want to show me a case where it, 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 something else caused that that's fine and i don't care if you agree with me you don't have to agree with me at all but i don't understand what you're telling me i'm wrong at i don't and you said i checked to make sure i was right where'd you check <laughs> Uh, I mean, you can just go across the internet now. Emerging res research suggests, emerging, brand new. How much brand new research is, is uh, your college considering? 
Not much. Probably will take a while, if it ever does. Emerging research suggests that when infants and children are raised in a sterile environment of psychosocial neglect, cortisol development is slowed, increasing the risk for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We know this. Okay. Good luck with your degree. Um, my best suggestion and, and advice for you is don't stop at formal education like a lot of therapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists will do. And once they get that degree, they think they're done, and they know it all, and they don't. And that degree, what they've learned, could be wrong. Okay? So someone in their profession that really, really wants to help people better will never stop learning. Okay? So don't stop learning if that's what you want to do for a living, please. Thank you. That's it, everybody. Uh, let me check, make sure. Yep, that's it. That's all. All the questions. Great questions. Keep them coming, please. Thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you like this, you encourage this message to be spread. You want to support it. That's something huge you can do. And I appreciate you very much for doing that. Thank you. Have a beautiful week. Love yourself first. Bye-bye.